we meet in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Thank you very much and a very warm welcome to you all as we meet on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Welcome to Mitcham Parish Church as we celebrate our parish Eucharist, giving thanks to God, giving him praise and glory for his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and praying especially today or Mothering Sunday for those who mother us, whoever they might be, Whatever gender they might be, we give thanks for those who care for us and show God's light and love to us. As we prepare ourselves for worship this morning, we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of celebration who rejoices with those who rejoice, we pray for those for whom Mothering Sunday is a time of thanksgiving, and joy. God of compassion, who weeps with those who weep, we pray for those for whom Mothering Sunday is a time of heartache and pain. God of community, who calls the children to come to him, we thank you that our love abounds for families of every kind. God of comfort, who gathers us as a hen gathers its chicks. We thank you that your love surrounds the disappointed and the hurt. God of every circumstance, we bring our thanks and praise that we belong to your family as your beloved children. Amen. Wherever we are, we live in God's family. When our families are broken by circumstance and pain, he reaches out to hold us in his arms, and piece by piece he makes us whole again. And in his love-filled hands, we are transformed. So we pray the Lord this day to help us to build relationships in all the corners of our hearts to be like God, to love God, and to feel brokenness and restore wholeness in the family worldwide. And so this morning, let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have dealt, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light.
and compassionate God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we come to the collect for this coming week, the fourth week of Lent. Let us pray. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a special prayer for Mothering Sunday. Loving God, we give you thanks for all who care for us, who have encouraged us and help us to grow, who have forgiven us and cared for us when we are unwell, who have supported us when times are hard, who have challenged us and who have told us about you, our living Lord. Thanks be to you, O Lord, our God. Amen. And so we move to our reading. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, 
because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For all who de do de evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that the deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please make yourselves comfortable. Today is Mothering Sunday, and as I've explained in my narrative in the notice sheet this week, a little time for relaxation, a little time for brightness to penetrate the gloom of the penitential season, a little time for a small offering of flowers to appear on the altar, and a little time for us to go a little mad with pink vestments. Read on if you need to, to find out more about Mothering Sunday. And I want to speak about the image of mothers or those who mother us, and to think about how this relates to our ultimate parent, God. And I start off by sadly thinking that many people would not actually see God as a loving, parenting, considerate, and kind image. Witness the story in the Old Testament this morning. No, many see the image and likeness of God as an uncontrollable idol who gives presents and makes bribes in between the humiliations that he inflicts on others. And perhaps that idea of God is sadly not as rare as we would like to think. When we see how many people turn away from any idea of God and are crushed and disappointed by life, we rely more and more on external stimuli to survive. And even we all might sometimes wonder if God has a dark side too. In today's Gospel scene, a Pharisee talks to Jesus about God. Nicodemus has arrived under the cover of darkness, and he misunderstands what the light of the world is saying to him. This gives Jesus the opportunity to clarify his meaning. So he declares, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son. God's supreme gift, Jesus, was given out of love, not out of a desire to humiliate or condemn the world. And we should be mindful of the biblical translations here, as the older Greek version says that God so loved the cosmos. And you can't get a more universal idea of broad and abundant love than that. God so loved the cosmos. It takes us beyond our little narrow thinking, even beyond, perhaps, the image of the planet of this world. God so loved the cosmos. God's world isn't a place of alienation, of accusation, of a distant God, even less a place where human beings are condemned or rejected. No, God loved the whole world, the cosmos, every bit of it and beyond. And we can and should trust that this is the reality that is exactly the same today as it was when John wrote his Gospel. Now, if God's basic attitude to the world was one of divine contempt or icy detachment, then his actions would lead inevitably to torment. 
But if our God is greedy for anything, it isn't for revenge, it's for people's acceptance of his love. And there is a divine hunger for human love. God desperately wants us to appreciate him. That is why God sent his only son. So that there is a human hunger for divine love. That is why God sent his son in the person of Jesus where two hungers meet. And two hungers are satisfied and divine love exchanges. As Jesus meets us, we meet divine love. The Gospel expresses the hope that if we really believe, if we really believed God loved us, we would surely emerge from our elective, from our chosen darkness. For in the dark it is difficult to see God, it is difficult to think about God, and we tend to make God into our own image and likeness, which is a bit of a mistake, possibly, as we should be striving to be made in God's image. And if we are actually hankering after ourselves and our own self-containment, then we hug the darkness and guess wildly and create a monster of an image of God, which is so untrue. Perhaps we come into the light more readily if we believe that the light we are entering is the light of a loving parent and not the light of condemnation. If some of us are afraid of the dark, it almost seems that all of us are afraid of the light. We're afraid of standing in a place that is overlit where we're exposed and defenceless and with a sense of guilt. But that's a dark image of God. For God is not waiting outside the door from the dark, ready to humiliate us. No way. The purpose of God's light is to enlighten us. It's not to blind us. God wants to see us in the light, to accept the light, and to enjoy the light. When Paul wrote to the Ephesians, he reminded them that we are God's works of art, created in Christ Jesus to live the good life as from the beginning he had meant us to live it. And note that, from the beginning. And that beginning is creation time, going right back to the beginning of time when God made the light and saw that the light was good. And he wanted us to enjoy that light as well. Now, probably, if we think about Paul's imagery, most of us would have difficulty in imagining ourselves as God's works of art. It takes less effort to see ourselves, perhaps, as God's mistakes, but that's just really an aside and a joke. We think of ourselves as a piece of promise that on closer scrutiny turns out to be nothing more often than a fake. And it can be so easy for us to put ourselves down. It may be our image of ourselves, as it is for many Christians, but that is no reason to claiming that that is the same view for God. For God loves us and values us and sees us in his light. It is the gospel that we were created in God's love, that we are God's works of art and God's work of creation. And we have to be imagining ourselves as God sees us and as God loves us. Now, I'm sure you'd agree that works of art should not be left to rot away in a dank, dark, neglected and unseen cellar. For if they have been abandoned for a long time, they will need restoration to be discovered and saved and gently brought back to life again. 
or just in case we feel we have seen in the darkness. Lent gives us the opportunity to think again about the task of restoration and of allowing God to bring out the best in us by bringing us into the light. Like all restorers, God needs light to work. Creation needs light. We know that, don't we? When we bring a hyacinth out of the airing cupboard, perhaps, after Christmas or Christmas time, when we actually expose plants to the sunshine to encourage them to grow. That brings out the best in creation. And God wants us to be the best we possibly can. So we should trust God's good intentions and come out to where we can be seen in the light. Who knows, we might even begin to value God's creative work ourselves. And if in the process that happens, we might start to see more of God's works of fine art in other people. And this is an opportunity today on Mothering Sunday to see God's fine works of art in others. As we sit in our homes probably this morning and consider this gospel reading and consider God shining the light on us and on others, who do we think immediately God has shone the light on? Who do we immediately think of who has been important to us? No doubt everybody somewhere has someone who has encouraged them who in a sense was in the light and managed to turn the light a little towards us. We need to look to those this day and thank them and to pray to God to keep them and to love them wherever they might be in this world or the next. The Reverend Tally Hammond in a recent periodical has suggested a little task for us today, and I think it's a good one, so this is your homework for this week. Go and find that very, very famous verse, John 3, 16, the one that starts, for God so loved the world. And I want you to strike out the word, the world, and replace it with the cosmos and your own name. So for me it would read, God so loved the cosmos and David that he gave his only son. I can think of no other greater gift for us and for all those who care for us to hear that loveful message on Mothering Sunday. God so loved the cosmos and us that he gave his only son. To God, therefore, be the glory today as we thank God for all who mother us. Amen. And so now in the power of the Spirit, And in union with our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to our Father. Firstly, we give thanks for the Church, our Mother, who brought us to birth in the family of Christ through the waters of baptism. We pray for Christopher and Richard, our Bishop, for Simon, our Archdeacon, and Rachel, our Area Dean, And we pray for this parish and all the parishes in our deanery. Let us pray that all Christians will hear again God's call to mother those in need, to bring light to others, to bring them home to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those in authority in our nation and in our world. 
May they learn from the example of Jesus Christ that true power is the power to feed the poor and the hungry, to make a home for the homeless, and to offer hospitality to the broken-hearted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own community, that we may see each other as brothers and sisters called to sit at God's family table together. Let us work together for that great day when God comes again to restore heaven and earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray today for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Praying especially for Marjorie Jordan, Andrew McMinn, Claire Nguenya, Kenjika Nwachuku, Sue Hawkyard, Jeannie Oye, Betty Smith, Paul Barry, Chika Anunkwu, and those mentioned in our intercession suite. And on this Mothering Sunday in particular, let us pray for those who have lost a motherly presence and for those who have never known a mother's love. May they find consolation in God the one in whom every family on earth finds its home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now give thanks for all who have loved us, and particularly who have nurtured us in our faith. May we be grateful for all of those who we could describe as our spiritual parents, for those who have nudged us and cajoled us, those to whom we have referred to in times of stress or worry. May we be bold to share what we have received from them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks for all those who have gone before us into the many mansions of the Father's home. We pray for the recently departed, especially the souls of Margaret Goodair, Richard Winbury, Shinwe Ozua, Winston Cockfield, Susanna Naema Coleman, and we remember with gratitude and love those whose years mind falls within this coming week or so. And we remember with gratitude and love especially those who have been significant in caring for us. For our mothers and for all who have shown that motherly presence. Rest eternal grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we rejoice with thanks for all those who have mothered us in our lives. In a world that is broken and in need of your motherly love, use us to aid others as you do us in providing comfort, nurture, protection and support. We ask that you will grow us as carers to those who need us so that we might celebrate your goodness together even through our own brokenness. Lord, may we see your light always and bring that light to others. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. And so we come to the peace, the special peace for Mothering Sunday. Christ is our peace. He offered up his life for us with a love beyond imagining, with a love which dispels fear, with a love which holds and guides us through life's trials and joys, with a love which is full of light and love. May the peace and the light of the Lord be always with you. Thank you very much. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace if we're with others. Otherwise, let's pray for one another at a distance this day. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Loving God as a mother feeds her children at the breast, you feed us in this sacrament with the food and drink of eternal life. Help us who spiritually taste your goodness to grow in grace within the household of faith. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. The is Lift up your heart. Give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give and praise. it is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your only Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your children once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous parenting heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others 
into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast, with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heart and mind, have mercy upon of your glory. Hosanna in the praise and bless you loving father through jesus christ our lord and as we obey his command send your holy spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may become to us the body and the blood of our lord jesus christ on the night before he died he had supper with his friends and taking bread he praised you he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, and again he gave you thanks. He praised you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us into your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the mother of God, Peter, Paul, and all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Today our daily bread, O 
Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Behold God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God of grace and compassion, your son Jesus Christ was part of a family in Nazareth. He knew the love of a mother and of a father. And by dying on the cross, brought us all together as new family. Help us in our Christian journey to strive for that day when the whole of humanity is one family together around your table in your church. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, amen to those prayers today, and indeed, once again, a very happy and blessed Mothering Sunday to you all. It's good that you're with us today and we hope to continue our um, contact with you this week. Um, tomorrow, Monday, we have the Churches Together first session of Looking Towards Passion Tide, which will run from 7.30, finishing by 9, 
it's on Zoom as usual, um, and the Zoom link is a separate one in the news sheet. Do look at that. You can not only actually come in on your computer, but you can dial in on the phone as well to listen to the session if you don't actually have a um, camera. So that's one opportunity for us to gather this week, just to think about the fact that here we are in mid-Lent now. This is mid-Lent Sunday, the Sunday where, in a sense, we turn away from the beginning and start going towards Jerusalem and towards Holy Week. So please do join us tomorrow evening if you can. Um, this happens this week and the following week. So we're looking into Passion Tide this week and the following week it will just be preparing people to going into Holy Week the following week. Just two sessions on Zoom on Mondays. Find a separate entry in the newsletter. Then Tuesday evening our service in the morning at 9.30 and again at 7.30 in the evening, we'll be gathering to continue our discussions around hashtag live or live Lent, our little Lenten booklet that we're following. You'd be very welcome to join us again on Zoom. We've had some really fruitful discussions these last few weeks, and I hope you'll be able to join me again on, on, the, on that session on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, you will know that indeed Wednesday marks the funeral for Winston Cockfield, who is the husband of our assistant um, priest here, the Reverend Jackie Cockfield. There is an invitation has gone out on our emails and it's also on Facebook to attend virtually online the service which will be um, held for Winston. Obviously, because of COVID restrictions, attendance is very restricted but the joy of, as it were, the internet, the virtual life that we're now living, is the fact that you will be able to watch the service directly online. So again, Reverend Jackie has very kindly shared that contact point with us, both um, on our internet link, um, through email, and it's on Facebook, and indeed I see it's on the WhatsApp um, Mother's Union group as well. So please do join us so that we can support Reverend Jackie and her family as they say goodbye to Winston on Wednesday. I want to encourage you this week to spend some time, please, reading the newsletter in its entirety. There's a fair amount of information on it, but there are some very important initiatives taking place, including repairing all of the roofs on the south side of our church building. Um, and our um, plans for that, and the fact that we've now published the faculty notice, we have to publish it to all and sundry, as it were, online as well as actually in our notice boards. So please do look at that this week, and do come back to me or the church wardens if you have any questions. There are a number of other really quite significant notices this week, so please do look at the whole of the notice sheet. Meanwhile, look forward to seeing you on Monday or Tuesday or perhaps knowing that you're with us on Wednesday and, of course, Sunday Mass for Passion Sunday. Next Sunday will be, as usual, at 10 o'clock. Meanwhile, keep safe and keep well and we look forward to being in touch again soon. The Lord be with you. May the Lord who brought us all to birth Strengthen us for daily life. May the Lord who provides for all our needs sustain us day to day. May the Lord whose steadfast love is for all send us out to live and work for others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.